Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles, welcome to another AP Micro Struggle. Today I'm going to start talking about Unit 4, and by starting to talk about Unit 4, I'm actually going to sort of summarize what we're going to talk about for the rest of this unit. This is called Topic 4.1, or an Intro to Imperfect Competition, but again, it's going to also be really useful as a summary of the different types of imperfect competition that we're going to be talking about in the rest of this unit. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So for talking about the different types of imperfect competition, I've also included a column about perfect competition, which we talked about at the end of unit three. But I think this table is really helpful for thinking about the different types of imperfect competition and trying to keep all of them straight in your head. So let's go ahead and sort of talk about this row by row. So how many firms do we have in each type of market? Well, in perfect competition, we say we have infinitely many. In a monopolistic competition market, which is what this is right here, this stands for monopolistic competition, we have many firms. Oligopoly, we're going to have few firms. Duopoly, two firms. Monopoly, one firm. So you can see as we go from perfect competition to monopoly, the number of firms in this market is going from infinite to one. So we're going to have fewer and fewer firms as we move in this direction right here. What about comparing price to marginal cost in each of these markets? Well, in perfect competition, we know marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, so price must be equal to marginal cost. Monopolistic competition, the price is going to be above marginal cost in the short run, but in the long run, they're going to be equal. And then oligopoly, from oligopoly on to monopoly, you see that we have prices greater than marginal cost, which indicates that we're going to have some positive profits for the oligopoly and monopolies which indicates that firms in an oligopoly, a duopoly, and a monopoly are going to have some positive values for profit as we talk about that in a second. So short-run profit, perfect competition, zero. Long-run profit, again, perfect competition, zero. Remember in the last video, we talked about how if profits are positive, new firms are going to enter, they're going to drive up supply, and they're going to keep driving up supply until profit is zero. That's all we're saying right here. The same thing is going to happen in monopolistic competition, except it's going to happen a little slower. You might have some positive profit in the short run, but in the long run, your profit is going to be zero. And again, because we have some market power in these markets over here, you can see that we're going to have positive values of profit. Again, we're going to talk about each of these market structures individually in different videos in Unit 4. The point of this table, the point of this video, is just to give you an overview of where we're going, as well as a helpful table to summarize the different types of market structures which I think is a really helpful study aid. So what does BTE mean? Just continuing to talk about this table. That means barriers to entry. Perfect competition, there are no barriers to entry, right? Anyone with a cow can enter the dairy market. Monopolistic competition, there might be a little bit of barriers to entry, but not really. Oligopoly, so for instance, the plane making industry, there's a lot of barriers to entry. You need a lot of stuff to enter the market for making planes. Same for a duopoly. Monopoly is absolute. You can't get in. There's only one firm, and they are really good at keeping other firms out, so no one else can enter the market. Monopoly, you just have one single firm, and they completely dominate the market. So market power is going to be really related to the number of firms and the barriers to entry. And as you can see, in a perfect competition market, we have no market power. Bill does not have any power to set prices. And in Monopoly, we are going to have total market power because there's only one firm. So let's go ahead and go on to a graph. If you've got questions about this table or something you could find confusing, drop a comment below, but maybe a graph will also be helpful. So here is a typical graph that we're going to talk about for imperfect competition. So I'm going to set perfect competition aside for a second. You can see we have this demand curve, which you might expect. We've got a marginal cost curve. We have this new curve right here called marginal revenue. Why is the marginal revenue curve under the demand curve? Well, what this is saying is as you increase the price, how does your extra revenue change? That's a marginal revenue curve. And you can see that our marginal revenue is not as high as the change in demand, because if I raise the price, yes, I am going to make more money off each person who buys something for me, but I am going to lose revenue because of the fact that less people are gonna buy my product. And so what that leads to is a marginal revenue curve that is positive. This is still positive, but what's happening is it's decreasing and it's decreasing faster than the demand curve. And all we're going to do is we're going to set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So for instance, this green point right here, but this green point is not what the firm is going to charge. 
they're going to set this quantity and they're going to go up to the demand curve and they're going to use the demand curve to set their actual price. Now, if they just set demand equal to marginal cost, we would be right here. And this is the perfect competition outcome. The reason I put this on this diagram right here is because in all of these cases, we're going to be comparing the outcome, the quantity and the price in equilibrium under these imperfect competition settings. We're going to be comparing them to perfect competition. So what you can see generally, we're going to have a higher price than in perfect competition. We're going to have a lower quantity because we're away from perfect competition. We're going to have a sort of dead weight loss. And remember from that video on dead weight loss, the dead weight loss is going to be this triangle right here, which I can explain as we go along in separate videos if that would be helpful. So if you found this overall helpful or you would like to ask a question, make sure to put a comment below. And if you're finding these videos generally helpful and you haven't done so, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.